Fingers crossed. Yeah. It is actually opening day eve. We'll stay tuned on what the weather does. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to PHOI Phillies podcast. Tyler Zuli, Jamie Lynch, Renee Washington. Excited because it's the night before opening day. Hopefully. Again, yeah, this weather's crossed. a real <laughs> kick in the junk. I'll be honest with you. It's been like on my mind all day. It's kind of put me in a foul mood. It's been running through your mind all day. Is that a song? <laughs> yeah. It's been running. It's been running. TikTok. Uh, Instagram. Okay. I'll see it in like three weeks if it's yeah. on TikTok, <laughs> on Instagram. Oh, uh, but it's kind of like a buzzkill. It's very much a buzzkill. I woke up today. Two years in a row of this? I woke, so March I, sucks. I always wake up pretty, like relatively early. What's early? And, okay, not as, not well, as no, early no, no, as No, 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 I'm not trying to compare, but what's, what do you define as early? So it's usually like six-ish is when I first wake up. Okay, and that's then early. days like today, I don't need to be up, so I go back to sleep. And so I woke up at like six ish. Then I woke up again at like seven thirty, okay. and I was like, "Where's the sun?" Like, yeah. so I always look at the 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 sunlight is my gauge of what time it is. Like, I have this game of like guessing what time it is before How, I look are at the you clock. Good at it? I am really good. I'm yeah. really good. And I'm Within like, oh, like must, three four minutes. I mean, I'm down to a like it's six thirty five, and okay. I'll be off by like a, oh yeah. I All like right. my sun time is on point. So today I was off though because there's no sun, and I was like, oh, it must not be. It must be like you know, whatever time it just throws my body for like a loop because there's no sun. And then it also hit me like, Oh no, does this mean we're really going to get a lot of rain? And I think so guys. It's, so it doesn't look promising. Do your rain dance, do whatever you need to do. Uh, Chris Slemmer, number one again, guys, you got to knock him off that number one <clears throat> spot. Happy to have you here. Slim. That's his nickname. Uh, Slim who was first. Appreciate you're Slim. Yes. Nice to have you here. Jay, Dave P you were third um connor what's up connor nice to have you here as well ray schumacher in the building happy up, wednesday ray? everybody listen we're gonna get into the uh breaking news we talked about it yesterday we have a history i will say guys if we went back and tracked how many times we've mentioned something should happen and then the signing the trade the move happens within like 24 hours of our show we could be really getting some bet can you say Mookie bets to the Phillies in a shocking preseason trade? <laughs> oh, speak it into existence. Yeah, right? we manifest a lot of roster moves. I and this is no different. Jordan Montgomery, we'll talk about him. Ronald We're gonna Acuna get into our for Nick meter. Castellanos straight up. <laughs> Who says no? Let's get into it. Let's get irrational with this. We're going to get on our uh, meteorologist hat for today. And then, of course, we're going to run through our top three managers. We did not get a chance to do it yesterday. So today will be our day to uh, rattle off who are the best three ever managers to lead the Phillies club. And, of course, because today is the day that we hope is before opening day, we're going to also give our predictions because it's never too early. We're putting our time capsule of what we think the postseason picture is going to look like, who's going to win Cy Young, who's going to be MVP, who's headed to the World Series. We got all that and more here today on PHOY Phillies Podcast. Coming the, up. Do you want to hear the hourly percentages? Coming up on PHOY Phillies Podcast. Buzz killing me. Oh, no. What's happening over there? I'm just real sad about yeah, the weather. Yeah, you're so sad. Yeah. Jamie's not um, wearing flip flops. He bought Starbucks. He's sad. In plaid. Yeah. <laughs> not uh, feeling very Three o'clock, 77% oh. chance We're not there yet, Jamie. of rain down at the stadium. Just, just 69% at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 56, 6 o'clock, 45. This fucking sucks. We're not there yet. Let's be, let's not, let's <sighs> not, don't rain on our parade just yet. Let's first talk about the news about Jordan Montgomery because we talked about yesterday how he was expected to sign this week. Little did we know he'd be getting signed hours after our show wrapped up. Now, Jordan Montgomery, who initially claimed he wanted a long, long, long-term deal, uh, that's all we kept hearing. Jordan wanted a long-term deal. Jordan wanted a long-term deal. Well, he did not get a long-term deal. In fact, he got a very short, barely there type of a deal. Jordan Montgomery signed for one year, $25 million to wow. the Arizona Diamondbacks. So as we're nearing the start of the season, he uh, finally got himself a home 
for 2024. So Jordan Montgomery with this deal, there's some extra caveats to it um, where it's he has the ability to opt out if he makes at least 10 starts in 2024. Um, he also has a vesting option. Vest, you know, I got my vest on. Vesting option yeah, I've never for been a, a big second vest year. Guy. I'm kind of jealous of you people. Like I, Wait, a lot what? of people wear vests. Why can't you wear a vest? I feel like um, I could be a vest guy. I could be. I just never have done it. There's all different types of vests. And I you feel know like that. I need to get my toes in that water a little bit. <laughs> Not your toes. There's a lot of vests out there. I know. So, like, I'm a long vest Stark person. Stark in our office is a big vest yeah. guy. Yeah. There's short vests that are, like, right above the belt line. Don't There's want that. There's puffy vests that Don't are very that. warm and comfy. There's long vests. There's hooded vests. Hooded vest. You also can be an open alley. vest. Per I'm not a closed vest person. That's weird to me. Like, why wear a vest if it's closed? Yeah. What's the point? Something maybe I'll get I into in 2024. Try. I think with this outfit, I could see a nice, yeah. a nice like tan vest going with the plaid. Maybe it's I'll, very fall. Maybe this will be the year of the vest for me. <laughs> but what shoes do you wear? You can't wear a vest in flip flops. Flip no, no, <laughs> no. Tyler's not a vest guy. No, I'm going to change you guys. will never, ever, ever see this me in a vest. This outfit would be great with a vest, except actually. There's one thing. I'll wear the, the suit vest. Like, if I'm in a wedding, I'll okay. wear that. But I'm the not wearing, piece. like, what you got on right now, Renee, you never will ever there, catch okay, me in the frat boy the vest. Like, this is a casual vest option mm -hmm. of, like, leggings, vest. It's a classic female look. Yes, my wife All I need is a coffee. Yeah, and, like, my sunglasses. You know, casual with sweats or leggings, vest. You could wear it nice with some jeans. Like, your outfit, Tyler, looks like because you're wearing some jeans today. I, I you do have jeans on. You could slap on a nice strange. navy vest and be more, like, business casual. This, okay, I'm going to get you, We're all going to be rocking some vests, guys. Yeah, we're all going to yeah, be rocking we'll some vests. Not a chance. Um, so there you go. A vesting option. That's how we went down that rabbit hole. Good Lord. Um, <laughs> a is that where it came from? Vesting yes, option? Yes. Yeah. All because your brain is, you guys are children. So with that, I think the most, there's a couple things that jump out at me, guys. Aside Dime from the fact that neither of you wear vests. One, the Boris Four. Scott Boris had five of the top free agents this offseason. And the one who actually went for the most, Jung Hoo Lee, signed with the Giants for $113 million. For his top four guys, they all were wanting nine nine-figure deals. None of them got nine-figure deals. No. Of course, Cody Bellinger wanted 200 plus million. Mm -hmm. He got 80 million. Matt Chapman wanted 150 million. He got 54 million. Blake Snell wanted 270 million. He got 62. Jordan Montgomery was around like 170 million. He got one year 25. So yes, the Diamondbacks are going to look very good, but on the financial side, way less than he goes for. And it also made me wonder, could the Phillies have got him on a one term, a one year deal like this? Um, when Jim Salisbury says they have fears of the third threshold, uh, I take it that that's coming directly from the mouths of Dave Dombrowski, mm -hmm. um, which is then coming from the mouths of John Middleton and the rest of the ownership group. Because, you know, we talked about it yesterday. Ten spots every round, international uh, money loss, more money lost on top yeah. of it. Um, it's There's big blows to going over that third threshold. And I didn't think that was ever going to be realistic. Uh, but for the Diamondbacks... You know, I'm curious Tyler's interpretation of their rotation now, but when you add Eduardo Rodriguez, who has to get healthy, he's a little dinged up to start the year. Now you add Jordan Montgomery. You apparently have the emergence of Brandon Fought, who we hate. Yeah. Uh, and then you have Merrill Kelly and Zach Allen at the top of the rotation. I mean, that's probably a top, I would say top three rotation in baseball, maybe top four, like depending on... How you value, you know, Seattle's up there, Phillies are up there, Braves are up there. Um, if Yamamoto's the real deal, maybe the Dodgers could could inch their way into that top five discussion. But I think Diamondbacks are right there yeah. with everybody now. They like sneakily just came in last minute, swarmed in. This is a this is a good move for them. It is. It's a and, very good move for them. And you, know, and they you get some, him for a one year with vesting yeah, options. There's no bad and, one year deals in baseball. And they have a bunch of young players. Mm -hmm. You know, Corbin Carroll's probably in that NL MVP discussion. And then, you know, like all of a sudden the Arizona Diamondbacks, it's a career, uh, it's the most money they've ever spent uh in their existence. Yeah. And uh that rotation's real. Tyler, where do you where do you think the Diamondbacks can crack at year's end here? Yeah, I think that adding this guy means that they mean business. They had a really nice young core who overachieved last year and yeah. and, and you know, it, I shouldn't say it's a young core. It's a it's a good mix of vets and young guys and obviously Corbin Carroll emergence is huge for them. 
Um, but you all of a sudden become a team that is very much in play to be a 90 win type team yeah. and, you know, kind of compete for the top two wild card spots in, in, in the, in the national league. Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I think that they're going to beat, you know, the Dodgers for, for the division title, but I think that they now have firmly cemented themselves in a lot of people's minds as a, a, a legitimate playoff team and not just a team who overachieved last year right. and will like slip back into a regression year. What do you I think, think about that the... was the importance of this, of a move like this, because so many times we see these teams that sneak up on people, especially in the postseason, I mean, and the they Phillies don't make any moves, ago. right? They don't make any major moves to help continue that. After a season like last year, you want to build off of, you know, Corbin Carroll and, and Zach Gallon and what the Diamondbacks are able to do. They've had, as you mentioned, the youth, but it was more just the inexperience of not having been in that stage. You want to build off of that. So they bring in Jordan Montgomery. They bring in Jock Peterson. <laughs> um, they the, bring it. <laughs> the hell, what the hell was that? So, like, the first game. I knew that would get you going. The, the first game the Phillies play the Diamondbacks They bring in Eduardo Rodriguez. I, you know, I might have... go to credential that day and just go down there and Troll seek out Jock Peterson and be like, Dude, can you explain what that was? Explain yourself. What the hell? Um, but this is a group, you know, Cattell Marte, Carol, this, they've got yeah, talent good. there. And you add, you want to continue to solidify. And I know in the chat you guys are saying all this to finish third in their division, all that, you know, like it's not going to happen. But they can I finish think second this, now. I think so too. And I think this solidifies the Diamondbacks as a true team that you, you can't sleep on. It's no one is going to take them. For, rotation. No one's going to overlook them at this point after last year's, uh, you know, World Series run. This year, they now have to showcase they belong. And I think this move with Jordan Montgomery is exactly that. It's a good move. And there's no bad one year deals and, you know, the vesting option and all that. It, it, you know, it's a good move. I would have loved for the Phillies in a uh, utopian world here yeah. to have done that because one year in 25 is is kind of perfect, I think, for Jordan Montgomery. I, I think he's he had a great World Series run, and he's a very good pitcher. But I think he got a little overhyped this offseason, if that's fair. But he's still very good, and the Diamondbacks got a lot better yesterday. They did. They did. And, um, you know, he... Did he, uh, I won't say it's a Kevin Durant-esque move. He's no Kevin Durant no. of like going to a team. You usually go to a team that beats you. You go to a team that you beat, but it's fine. Everything's fine. Um, that being said, though, yes, Jordan Montgomery is off the board. The Boers four are finally all locked into their homes for 2024. So Snell and, uh, and Montgomery, who are both left-handed, got less money than Tyler Glasnow. Yes. Combined got less money than Tyler yes. Glasnow. Yes. Let that just let that Scott, there. Scott let Boris that. is human, He's and human. I think owners are sick of his his shit. Again, all his his big four, he he wanted nine figure deals for, and none of them got it. That's pretty not wild. even close. This is like they didn't even get half of what they were asking for. What did Jordan Hicks end up signing for? Do you remember off the top of your head? Was it like twelve million? Very soon to see. If I, uh, I want to say it was like ten ish. I was just trying to think of some like lower level like starter. Can I beat you guys now on the typo? Ah, no. You got four years, thirty-four. Yeah, million. About, so it was about ten a year. It was like eleven a year. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, I, so it was. It, it that makes and about that's where, sense. That's for a risky signing. Well, like, and they right. guys the, never done as it. As soon as you saw that money, but even before the uh, news that he was going to be a starter came out, like as soon as you saw four for forty-four, you're like, okay, that's that's low end starter money. Like you're not, I, I don't think you would have signed Jordan Hicks to that as a reliever. No, no I don't yeah. think. Um, so as soon as you see that money, you go, okay, he's probably going to, you know, try to be a starter like, again think about that. He gets 11 Jordan Montgomery, the top I know. guy on the market know. gets coming off of a well, World I mean, Series coming off of. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's that's pretty, where it, we was, are. it was a weird off season. Like Lance, Very. Lance Lynn got 10. What I did think. Sonny Gray get again? 20. Uh, no, he got more than that, I think. I 22, like, 23. Like was... Oh, it's a type off. Oh, you mean per year? Yeah, just per year. Oh, okay. Um, I'm out probably. Of this one. You got a head start. I feel like it was 50 or 60. Three for 75. So 25 a year. Okay, I was close. So he gets Ish. the same just on a lesser. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Sonny Gray gets three right. or 75. Right. But Jordan Montgomery, who's younger and just came off a great playoff run. Only gets the one year deal. But just that's an option. Yeah, just a strange <laughs> offseason. It, it has been strange. Um, and I know in the chat you guys are jumping in. Let me go back a little bit. Give some so, thumbs up in the chat. Yeah, Let's hit go. that thumbs up button Smash while you're it. here. Uh, Matt, you're saying Michael J. Fox is the only person to ever pull off a vest. I think you can channel your inner Michael J. Fox. He's for probably sure. on the rush. You like jogger, so I feel like you could do hoodie joggers vest. Yeah. 
hat combo with sneakers though not the flip flops michael j fox the... is definitely up there on the on the rushmore vest yeah people. and dave p claims i'm wearing a life preserver that's fine it's maybe a big i could save bro, somebody though. it is um, like it tech is. and finance. It is. That's why I said it's a frat bro look. Yeah, that kinda. was said in the chat. It's, it's not a they sport coat like, anymore. What? It's a it's a zipped up vest. Yeah, no, the zipped up vest is weird yeah. to me. Um also, uh, you guys, John Lemmerman, what's up, John? Steve, you're saying uh vest, no, but you could see you being an LL Bean slipper guy. Uh, I have Ugg slippers. I totally could see and that. And I don't wear Even slippers. Though your feet I yeah, I, sweat? I, I they're very comfortable. But I don't like wearing them because they're hot boxes around my feet. Okay. But they're very comfortable. Dave is saying guys can also wear yoga pants. Um, that, does, that doesn't mean they should. I agree with you, Dave. I wear Lululemon. Leave the yoga pants to they're not the yoga women. Pants. That would be weird. I'd be moose knuckling all over the place. <sighs> that's not. That's not. You didn't have to. You didn't have to even chime in on that one. You could just let that one stay where it was. Well, went. I mean, that's what it is. That's what the kids call it, right there. <laughs> no, they, I don't. I've never heard I that. Think it, you know, they call it moose knuckling. Moving on. I'm proud of you. What's up? I'm proud of you. I like that name. What a great, friendly, inspiring, happy, positive vibes. YouTube name. You're saying according to fan graphs, the Diamondbacks are the fourth best rotation behind the Braves, Phillies, and right. Dodgers. That, Is that absolutely. updated with Montgomery? Um, Do you know? I don't. I I think so. Probably. But yeah, behind the Braves, Phillies, and Dodgers, that makes sense. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you too. The, the Mariners getting um, a little disrespected there. I'll have I to know. look that up. Doctor Nighthawk, happy opening day eve to you as well. Always dropping great food on Twitter. Make sure you're checking out her page because she always has some great food. A um, nice girl to have y'all here. A Philly show. Love and it. Chris Miller did catch your yoga pants comment and hit you with the pause because <laughs> you can't just drop things like that, JD, and, and just casually. Keep what it else moving. would you call it? I don't call it anything. I don't think Bunched about men up. in yoga pants. Yeah, it's weird. There's just a reason it doesn't thing. happen. Yeah, yeah. Be, because Can the moose knuckling imagine? would be too I'm bad. I'm not going to lie, though. The way we see men wearing dresses and all types of stuff, Caleb it's Williams only a matter of time a before we see a man walking down the street in some yoga pants. Oh. I, I don't need to see that. They'd have either. to build up the crotch area differently. Okay, yeah. moving along. Yeah. And Martian Lynch, you're back. What's up, cousin Martian? Um, so happy Wednesday, guys. Hit that thumbs up button yeah. while you are here. And uh, let me tell you about something that you don't have to be scared of. You can be excited for it because it's going to change your life in all the right ways. That's right. That's our friends over at Factor Meal Kits, providing you an opportunity to eat healthy, delicious, chef quality restaurant quality food that's delivered right to your doorstep and with their meal kits they provide you the opportunity to have the ease of you know knowing you've got great food right there that's easy to heat up never frozen always fresh food that's delivered to your doorstep with fact meal kits you also don't have to worry about the question of what's for dinner i had that problem last night what's for dinner what did i taste for i don't feel like cooking right now you never have to worry about that they've got a ton of different meal plan options for you calorie smart They've got Protein Plus, Keto. They have Chef's Choice, which just allows the chef to provide you with some surprises every day for what you're eating. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, smoothies, snacks. And they have 35 different options to choose from as well as add-ons so you can add to whatever your meal plan is and really customize it to work best for you, your lifestyle, and your schedule. And along with the customization, you have the ability to pause at any time. You can reschedule if you need to. Let's say you're going away for a couple weeks. No problem. Pause that delivery until you return and then return back to some great food right on your doorstep. So flexibility and having the option to really customize what works best for you, what you have taste for. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast premium options with no cooking required. Sign up and save and they have done the math. It's much cheaper than takeout for those of you that like to eat Chinese food and pizza and whatever other takeout every single day. Because with fact, you get dietitian approved, nutritious, delicious meals. So head on over to factormeals.com slash Phillies50 and use code Phillies50 to get 50% off. That's code Phillies50 at factormeals.com slash Phillies50 for 50% off today to get started eating right. Pancakes, smoothies, chicken options, all these different meals, midday bites, Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and smoothies over at Factor Meal Kit. Yeah, I'm excited for my protein uh, pack oh, that's yeah. coming from them soon. And if I was looking for, say, an, a nice, healthy, delicious beverage to watch down my meal with, I would recommend Olipop. And here in the, the greater Philadelphia area, Wawa is uh, a bloodline to all of us. You're going to start seeing Olipop in those express cases in Wawa's all across the area any day now. Uh, and Olipop is the next generation of soda, basically, because, look, if you're uh, trying to take care of yourself a little bit more because you got young kids like myself, I try to drop soda. I love soda. Who doesn't, right? But in this new day and age, you don't want to drink all that sugar. It's just not good for you. And Olipop is trying to bring us into the next generation of soda. 
uh, with prebiotic and plant-based fiber and other botanical ingredients that support good gut, gut health. And Olipop is a new kind of soda because it only has two to five grams of sugar and nine grams of fiber a can. So make the transition over. It's better for you. It's available pretty much everywhere in over 30,000 retailers nationwide and soon to be in every Wawa in those express cases. So keep your eyes peeled for them. I saw them at Whole Foods recently. My wife, I got hooked on them. You can see the fridge over Renee's shoulder in our shot. Uh, Olipop, they have some great flavors like classic root beer, strawberry, vanilla are their two most uh, popular ones. I like the cherry vanilla one myself. Renee and others here in the office have been raving about the grape. I think Kyle's a big lemon lime guy. So Olipop has been here at the office and we love it all. You know, who doesn't love, you know, growing up with soda? You can, you can even do like a root beer float in the root mm. beer one. You can do yeah. that nostalgic soda feel with Olipop and it's good for you. It has nine grams of prebiotic fiber in every single can. Uh, and delicious, delicious flavors. You don't need those 40 milligrams of sugar uh, that traditional sodas give you. So use the code PHLY20 for 20% off your next Olipop order. The discount only applies to one-time orders, not to subscription orders. Olipop is sold online, drinkolipop.com, and on Amazon if you're like me and just go there for convenience factor. And available in almost 30,000 retailers nationwide, including Wawa, Target, Sprouts, Wegmans, ShopRite, and of course, another Philadelphia institution, GoPuff. So check it out. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys in the chat are hilarious. Um, I just thoroughly, thoroughly am enjoying the fact that I've now been the honorary fourth member of TLC. You can That's call nice. it TLCR. It's I was a my big outfit. left eye guy. I was, as a, yeah, as a I've youth. been known as Renee Right Eye um, uh -huh. or. The other nickname I forgot yesterday is Nainer. That's another one. Nainer. Or Nane. It just all basically changes off of Nane that people decide to have. So mm -hmm. Nainer. I could be Nainer. I can be the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Renee Third Eye Washington. I could be the third eye instead of left eye. And then uh, you guys are talking about just a lot of ridiculous things. So hilarious. And um, John Sequella, my daughter did... loves Olipop. I love Miller Lite. We are a <laughs> PHLY family. Thank you, John. Oh, there it is. It's a match made in heaven. I love that. All right. Well, as you guys are talking through... Um, Martian Lynch said, I'm dressed like a bass player from Smash Mouth. Smash Mouth is a bunch of hey, dicks. Wait, They're Giants fans. Smash it's Mouth was all-star, right? Yeah. Hey, now. You're an all-star. Ah, I was hoping that would lead you into it. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. You took uh, But the they're bait. big Giants fans, and they're, like, kind of rude on Twitter. So screw those guys. Oh, that's rude. Yeah. The they're mean dad. online. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you might not be a bass player for Smash Mouth, but let's put on our meteorologist hat now. And let's go into uh, the weather report. So today's... Not good. I know. I know, guys. But today's takeaways are presented by Factor. You can use code Phillies50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life with any active subscriptions at factormeals.com slash Phillies50. Putting on my meteorologist voice because I pulled up my uh, go-to national weather service where I can find all the latest weather updates. And if you look here on our green screen, currently tonight... Uh, or <laughs> currently tonight. Tomorrow. <laughs> Whatever. Let Boo. me start again. <laughs> I see why you didn't last in meteorology. You're bad at your job. <laughs> Is that a SpongeBob thing? No, that was just me telling her oh. she's bad at her job. <laughs> Let me try again. <laughs> Starting over. Record scratch that, Tyler. <laughs> Do you remember which one it is? Let me, Tyler, <laughs> ones and twos. Let me rewind. <laughs> Did that play? We don't know. <laughs> I hope so. We'll see. It played in my ears. Okay. So today we can expect for anything else, scattered good for my showers enjoyment. mainly after 1 p.m. And then you can also see that we're going to have a cloudy forecast with a high near 53. Now tonight, some scattered showers before 9 p.m. Then rain likely moving in mainly after midnight. Rain will be I can see that. Yeah. Well, our, our ceilings do leak here. So I can't do this. Thing. If it does rain a lot tomorrow, there's a good chance it could be Rain will be falling leaking. constantly throughout the night. Patchy fog between 11 p.m. and midnight. And, of course, it will continue into Thursday. So as we look at Thursday, rain high near 53, light northwest wind. So Not it's going to be rainy. It's going to be windy. So you're going to need your rain boots, your umbrellas. But hold on to those hats and umbrellas because the wind might be blowing them away. So Thursday, chance of precipitation is around. <laughs> Should we cancel the game or not? Chance of precipitation <laughs> is around. Congratulations. You're the new weekend new uh, weather person at uh, Hurricane Schwartz. Look Topeka, out. Kansas. 
<clears throat> Cecily, All she's right. coming for your job. <laughs> Chance of precipitation, 90%, guys. Not great. And new precipitation amounts between three quarters and one inch mm. are possible. And it gets worse as the day goes on. Cloudy and then gradually becoming partly cloudy. Oh, that is the positive. The sun will start to shine a bit, but not for long because we've got rain, rain, and more rain. rain By rain, Thursday night, away. precipitation is 60%. So the question is, as we're looking at Phillies opening day, will Will it happen on Thursday or not, ladies and gentlemen? Probably not, unfortunately, because Friday, it is sunny Friday with a high near 55. So if I'm making these decisions, which fortunately I'm not the one making these decisions, I'd rather play on Friday when it's supposed to be sunny well, with a high near 55, but light breeze. Close to 40 mile an hour winds. I didn't get there yet. I see 35 miles per hour on okay. mine. That five miles per hour is quite the difference. I've seen 38, 39 in my models. <laughs> So will the game get played? That's and my our model takeaway. is uh, violations Greg know. outside. He told me about that. <laughs> I can't do this seriously. I, I feel you're like me a laugh. I feel like a postponement is coming. Well, again, it's sunny on Friday and rainy on Thursday. For that reason alone, wouldn't you rather have opening day on a nice sunny day, happy day versus they did it last everybody year. sitting in the in your ponchos? They almost have to make the call today, though. And I hope they do because we are supposed to be live tomorrow at Bet Parks, and we don't want to have to have any issues. Um, we want to make sure we're planned and we know what's going on tomorrow because, of course, you guys can join us for a pregame show, watch party, postgame show, and because it's back, the Anthony Gargano show is getting started as uh, that'll be t getting going at 9 a.m. So we've got a fun day for tomorrow, and the only thing that's raining on that is quite literally the rain. So we don't know if it's going to happen for tomorrow. Hopefully we get an update today. Uh, but, yes, we have just become P-H-O-Y uh, W-X weather. You know, we're just giving you the weather yeah, on our green screen. I feel here. like I feel like we're, we're going to get it. It's going to get postponed. That's just my gut is that it's going to get postponed. And I really want baseball tomorrow. What is that? I think it's likely. Okay. This just in no. uh, breaking news. <laughs> well, please do it today. Please. Breaking news that's not really breaking news. This is not real. It's fake news that the weather is looking like it's going to cause a postponement tomorrow. Now, I am not anybody important connected to the actual game tomorrow. I'm just somebody that happens to be here on the show with a microphone telling you it's most likely going to happen. So today's takeaways, we might not be playing baseball tomorrow. This might not be opening day Eve. It might be opening day Eve Eve, mm. and we actually might get opening day on Friday. So, well, yeah, I don't know. I'm not too happy about it, Jamie. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just think it's such a pain in the ass for everybody. You might as well just do it tonight because tomorrow looks like a flood out. Well, also, every time it rains, it quite, quite literally is a monsoon. And yeah. I think we need to start building the ark at this point because we don't get light rain anymore. It never... I guess we should be happy it's not snow this because technically if it was Northwest. colder, this could be snow. Yeah, Minnesota, but there's a positive. I saw it's snowing yesterday. People are getting snow. Fortunately, we are not. But all this rain is causing flooding. It's causing leaks. It's causing water damage. It's a mess. And so I do feel like we're gonna get um, we're gonna get rained out. So cool. <laughs> there's our national weather update brought to you by National Weather Service, who can sponsor us if you'd like us to do some real weather updates. Um, but overall, not looking great for tomorrow, uh, unfortunately. So we'll keep you up to date on our end as well as we get details around like what's the plan around our opening day festivities um, because we are going to have a chance to be live with you one way or the other, whether yeah. it's Thursday or Friday. There's going to be Miller Lite specials. Renee, we're going to be giving away tickets to Saturday's game, and we're going to be giving away tickets to the first game of Reese Hoskins return yes. to Philadelphia, the Get Brewers away. series coming up. Um, so you'll have Miller Lite specials. High fives from me and Renee. Uh, possible tickets We're to win. We're high-fiving, folks. Oh, yeah. Big high-five day. <sighs> Opening day is a big high-five day. Uh, so tickets, Miller Lite specials, good times. Come down to the uh, South Philly uh, Racetrack and Sportsbook, which is Bet Parks right there by the stadium, uh, and say hello, please. We'd love to see everybody. And yeah. give us a thumbs up. We would love that. We would love that. And, um, yeah, I'm glad you guys enjoyed our uh, you know weather update brought to you by PHOY Phillies, where we get all the – Latest, greatest, and most accurate, obviously, Clearly. weather news. Clearly, we are accurate. So, yeah, been fun. Been fun, not fun at all. Um, so, hopefully, tomorrow we actually will get some Phillies baseball. Either way, it's starting soon. It will happen this week, whether Thursday or Friday. It will be going down this week. And uh, we do, of course, today, before we wrap up, we're pretty well through our show sheet so far. We've got to get into, uh, you know, 
top managers as well as our postseason predictions. Uh, because right now, Jamie, though, I'm just most concerned about the fact that with the weather leads to flooding, messes up people's floors. I know my family ran into it. Some floor issues. Oh, what are you talking about, Renee? Are you <laughs> trying to lead me into something? Or some floor issues and some flooding. Oh, and I yeah. don't know. Like, what do you do when it floods? I, I would probably call Empire today. <laughs> uh, and you can save $350 off new floors today by going to Empire Today slash EmpireToday.com slash P-H-L-Y. You can get $350 off those new floors. And with Empire Today, nobody likes going to stores anymore. I order everything online clothes groceries everything else why not just have the flooring come to your house and do a convenient in-home virtual design with the top flooring in the game there's a lot of uh copycats and impersonators out there but empire today has stood the test of time you've heard their jingles for life they're around forever uh now they just come into your home give you the virtual floor design they're not going to bog you down with uh, you know, 1,700 different flooring options. What they're going to present to you is stuff they would put in their own homes. And you can see it right there with your cabinets, with your wall paint, with your furniture. And it's great. Why would you go to a store when you can have them come to you, sit in your kitchen, and hook up your house with what it's going to look like with its new virtual floor designer? It's awesome. They pride themselves on the convenient at-home service. And they service their own warranties. So if an issue ever does arise, just call Empire themselves and they'll service the warranties themselves. You're not going to have to track down some manufacturer's phone number. So schedule a free in-home estimate today. All listeners can receive $350 off when they use promo code PHLY. Restrictions apply. See EmpireToday.com slash PHLY for details. Fantastic. And while we're talking about some uh, great people to work with, Check out our buddies over at Mortgage CS, Ben and Alec, who do a fantastic job of providing you with customer service 24-7, where you can reach out any time of day. If you want to talk about and complain, literally yell out the clouds with them, you can do so. If you want to talk about the house buying process, you can do that as well. Because over at Mortgage CS, which stands for Mortgage Concierge Service, they are at White Glove Service located right here in Philly. But they're also licensed coast to coast. I know we've got friends joining us from all over the place. Maybe you're down in Baltimore like our friend Slim. Or maybe you're down in Florida or out west in Colorado or California. Wherever you're joining us, watching us live, back on podcast platforms, or just watching us later, you can always work with Mortgage CS since they are licensed coast to coast in various states around the country. And they do a good job of educating, empowering their clients, helping their clients obtain ultra competitive rates, as well as making sure they're looking out for you and your bottom dollar, not Mortgage CS. They also want to make sure that you can help at any time or, excuse me, have any time the ability to ask questions, get that support that you need. And as the spring purchase market is heating up and there are a lot more houses, the market is on fire right now. There are a lot of houses available. And so with that, there are also a lot of people looking to buy. And so Mortgage CS wants to make sure you can stand out, make the strongest offers possible. They also offer refinancing options. So rate and term refinances for a rate payment reduction or cash out refinances to be able to tap into home equity for you know any projects you may have, Mortgage GS is the place to go. Don't be a sucker. Reach out to Ben Stucker. Don't be a sucker, <laughs> brother. Ben and Alec. Oh, wow, Hulk Hogan. Mm. Ben and Alec want to make sure you can reach out any time of day, and Ben has even given you his phone number right here on the bottom of your screen, 267-391-7425. You can reach out via email at ben at mortgagegs.com because when you hear the word mortgage, Usa. Think of Mortgage CS. Think of Ben and Alec. Think of the people that want to help make sure they can alleviate the stressors of the house buying process. So check out MortgageCS.com slash P-H-O-Y to get started and understand that this advertisement is not a commitment to lend or extend credit. Mortgage CS is an equal housing opportunity mortgage broker and all loans are subject to credit approval. Certain restrictions may apply. Company NMLS ID number 1464766. And you can visit MortgageCS.com for more information. All right. So we're rolling, 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 rolling through the show. Now we've talked about. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I know I didn't look at you for a reason because I knew you, I could feel you looking at me. <laughs> so with that, we've talked through some of the most pressing news of the day. Jordan Montgomery and the weather. Who would have thought it? But now let's get into top managers because as we're talking about predictions and the season, you know, your team is 
has a lot of talent, but your team is only as talented as the guy in charge and making sure you've got a great manager to lead you. And there have been some phenomenal managers throughout the course of the Phillies club. And there have been some that have not been so phenomenal. And when you look over the history, there's a lot of names that we could have included here. But as always, we're looking at people who within their tenure with the Phillies made the biggest positive impact world series titles, Definitely being one of them. Any sort of playoff success, definitely being when another one. When you're the one. losingest franchise in the history <laughs> I wasn't gonna of say all it like sports that, and you Jamie. win a title here, guess who's going to be one and two? I wasn't going to say all that, but yes. The Phillies historically have sucked. Okay. I was These being more guys positive, won. Patty. They're at the top of the mountain. <laughs> Breaking. Spo spoiler. Spoiler alert. Oh, wow. Yeah. There it is. The all guys right. that won. Get weighted heavy here. Okay. Because most of it has sucked. Okay, you ready for this one? Although it may be raining a lot, we need to be an arc, build an arc. Don't worry, because the Phillies had at the helm, Danny Oh, my God. <laughs> Number three <laughs> on the list before Tyler and Jamie kick me out of here. Danny Ozark. The Ozarks is a beautiful spot to visit, by the way. Have you been? Um, nope, I've just seen the show. <laughs> <laughs> you can't back that up. <laughs> It could be a dump down there. You have all those rednecks killing people. Like no Jason Bateman and Ozark was such a great show. It looked it was pretty. A good okay? show. I saw Jurassic Park. It looked beautiful. I just want to go back to the time of the dinosaurs and see what happens. Like, what are we doing? You're like Paige. He's like, I want to go there. I'm like, I, no, that, that dinosaur is going to eat us. It looked like a beautiful spot to visit. It's a great potentially. Spot. Potentially. They also were doing some money laundering and but things there. But you said there. that, and I was like, oh, I guess she went to the Ozarks. I mean, I probably passed over it in flight, you mm -hmm. know, but I did visit it several times on Netflix. So okay. that's yeah. the extent of me and the Ozark. All okay, right. back to what I was trying to say. I thought it was a personal recommendation here. It is right personal. Right. I watched that show through and through. Ozarks was a beautiful, was a great show. I won't say beautiful. That's a weird way to describe it. Great show. And so we're leading things off. With the Ozark, Danny Ozark, that is. Let's go back to the graphic, shall we? <laughs> so Danny Ozark, seven years as the Phillies manager with a five, 594, 510 uh, record during that time. He also had 100 win seasons in 76 and 77. Did have three straight NLCS losses. Danny Ozark is one of the most successful managers in Phillies his history, not to win a World Series with the team. He was the one that helped. He did all the heavy lifting. He helped climb to the top of the mountain and then fell short at the top of the mountain. And it did, of course, as we know, during his time, the team did turn a corner to be at least a playoff contender, be in the mix, be a team that progressively, um, you know, was able to take those strides from his first season where they finished sixth to then moving forward, being a team that was, you know, able to win the division or be third and second in the division, I should say, before winning the NL East in consecutive seasons from 76 to 78. Danny Ozark was the guy that literally put the team on his back and helped climb them up the mountaintop before the next guy took over and finished things off. Yeah, um, you know, before my time, didn't get to live and uh, die with his daily moves, obviously. Uh, <laughs> none of us here did, uh, but he's, you know, talked about pretty well here. Three straight NLCS losses is uh, pretty rough when uh, you come in third on the all-time manager list, having losing that many LCS games. Um, yeah, Danny Ozark three. I mean, it's not a great list in you know, totality. You know, when you look at Danny Ozark's three straight NLCS, is too, because uh, I, I, I went back and I asked a couple of people who were, you know, growing up their formative years dur during that run. And I, I said, hey, listen, 90, uh, 76, 77, 78, how many should the Phillies have won? And how many World Series would the Phillies have won? And the, the collective answer that I seemingly got was one for each mm. answer. 76, they ran into the Big Red, the big red Machine. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe one of the greatest baseball teams ever assembled. The five Hall of Famers on that team. Um, 78, they were 90 and 72. They were kind of on the downswing at that point. Uh, 77 was the consensus one that they seem to continually go back to is the one that they probably should have won the CS and could have won the World Series that year. I, I mean, it, you have to kind of look at it in time and place. And when you when you run into a Cincinnati Reds team that was elite and then you fall short to a Dodgers team, you, you may have been able to beat. Um, you know, it's it's mixed results. But when you get the three straight NLCSs, there's it's I mean, there's something, something yeah. to it. And I know it's different than it is now. It's you know yeah. that, you know then it Less was teams, then yeah. it was win your division, go to the yeah. CS. But still, I think it's got to get over the hump yeah. to be a top two guy. 
You do. You do. And our number two guy did get over the hump. He took the torch that was passed on from Danny Ozark and ran with it. Although his tenure was not long, it was successful, to say the least. Dallas Green, in his three years as the Phillies manager, he took over midseason in 1979 and then turned around and won the World Series in 1980. Um, they were 34-21 and 21 with the first half. What is this? Oh, in the first half of 81 during the strike. And then he replaced, as mentioned, Danny Ozark in 79 to have the first postseason berth, the first the win the pennant, win the World Series in 1980. Um, again, that brief stint for Dallas Green to be the only man to lead the team to a World Series for over 100 years is remarkable and absolutely launches you at the number two spot. No, it's not Gabe. It's Dallas <laughs> because he helped lead this club to their World Series. They, uh, you know, it's remarkable to see how much Danny Ozark kind of laid the foundation, and then Dallas Green really came in and was able to help the club solidify themselves and win a World Series. Yeah, I mean, Pete Rose had a lot to do with that, uh, but Dallas yes. Green is, you know, one of those baseball lifer, just great managers everywhere. He, he went was successful. Uh, wasn't here as long as our number one guy, but, you know, a monumental... Uh, Phillies manager in their history. Yeah, and, I mean, there were rumors for, uh, you know, that kind of swirled around in that seven, right after 79 during the 80 season that, like, if this wasn't it, you know, you start to look internally and maybe start to think about breaking the core up. So 80 was m monumental, not just for winning the first World Series mm -hmm. in the franchise's history, but keeping that core together for another, you know, it, it only ended up being another two or three years to get back to the World Series in 83. And then it kind of starts to deteriorate from there. But I think that if they don't, at least get to the World Series in 80, let alone win the World Series in 80, you may see an entirely different core enter the 81 season, and then maybe they don't get to the 83 World Series. Exactly, exactly. So Dallas Green did get them to a World Series, and our number one guy did as well. I know Chris Lemmer, you, are, you had your top three in the chat. Um, you are correct. Our number one, by no surprise whatsoever, who helped win a World Series in 2008. It's Charlie Manuel, Uncle Charlie. Nine years as the Phillies manager, a 786-36 record with a 551 win percentage. He, of course, in 2008, led the team to the World Series. 2009, the pennant, five times they won the NL East. And the average NL East finish for the team when Charlie Manuel was leading, 1.7. Charlie Manuel, just a phenomenal person. A phenomenal, you know, still one of those guys that, as we even saw down in spring training, people get up on their feet for and cheer for and are excited for because, you know, as he says, this is for Philadelphia. This is for our fans. It's he connected, you, connected so well with the fans, connected so well, and arguably, uh, the without a doubt, I should say, unanimously, the greatest manager to have led this group with those uh, NL East. NL runs and a World Series. Yeah, just a, a, a great dude. Um, you know, his <laughs> team loved him. Like Jimmy Rollins used to say, sitting up on the railing with Charlie talking baseball was yeah. was his favorite memories. Um he's just he's the best. He's Uncle Charlie, man. I mean, he won a title uh with that team. He was here for a long ass time. He still is. Um, Charlie's the best. Yeah, he is. Any, right. any thoughts on oh, I, 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 There's not much for me. I thought me you were looking when he did no, the cue. I, th I think there's not much for, more for <laughs> me to add. I think that, I mean, you know, you obviously, he, he had a little bit of luck. And I think there's a little bit of luck with any manager because you have a team that was willing to spend money, had an incredible core that was that, that grew together and, and thrived together. But it doesn't mean that you're, you know, it, there's no takeaway from a manager. Like, he pulled all the right strings for a, a handful of years. And, yeah. you know, re whether the right strings are easier decisions or not, like in 2008, you send Brad Lidge out there. All right, safe situation. There goes Lidge. Just because you knew that it was going to be a lockdown situation. Jimmy Rollins at the top of your order is a catalyst. Chase Utley and Ryan Howard hitting 3-4 is, you know, one of the most potent 3-4s in baseball for a five-year stretch. But I, I think at the same time, you only can get – like, like a man, a good manager can help you win, you know, four five, six extra games. And I think more mm -hmm. times than not, Charlie did that. And, you know, the two paired really well for the most successful run over the course, probably in the course of Philly's history. It's, it's either, yeah. it's either 76 through 80 or seven through 11. Those are your two choices. And I think because of the fact that they got to two world series, they won five straight divisions. Would probably lean the 07-11 run over 76 through 80. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and as you guys, I know, Rob, there's been other managers brought into the chat and the conversation. Rob Thompson brought into the mix. 
John Lemon with a, with a good question. If Thompson wins the World Series this season, he's number two right away, right? I mean, this, as we've learned, as we've been going to the depth chart, there's not a lot of recent names on our top list for any role within the Phillies organization. Ryan Sandberg isn't on the list. What are you doing? And <laughs> we're a Pete McCannon fan. If Rob yeah. is like able Pete, to, actually. if Rob Pete is able to, um, if the team's able to win the World Series this year, yeah, Rob definitely jumps onto the yeah, list. Yeah, I mean, two NLCS appearances and one World Series in two years is a pretty damn good yeah. start. So it's not a very high bar you have to clear here as a nope. Phillies manager. And, and, and by the way, Neil uh, posted, he says, a little overrated question mark. I feel even dirty, even suggesting it. Not what I'm suggesting here is as overrated. I'm saying that you, in, in order to be a great manager, numerically speaking, like the wins and the mm -hmm. accolades, you have to be paired with a good team. Like I look at, there's a couple of guys across baseball now that I think are really good managers that just don't have great teams. Like I think Skip, Skip Schumacher is a really good manager. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the Marlins regressed this year and he's going to get looked at and go, okay, well, he had one good year, one bad year, and, and how do we measure him? I also think there's guys that get that have really, really good teams that don't have to do a whole lot, like yeah. Dave Roberts, for example. I don't think Dave Roberts is a great manager, but he wins because his team is incredible. So, like, there has to be a balancing act between the two, and I think Charlie is a rare occurrence of a good manager with a good team. So mm -hmm. I overrate it. No, 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 not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, like, there has to be – the, there yeah, is a scale. A, there's a the, there's the a bell curve to yeah, to sure, rate numeric sure. success. Exactly, because you're not playing for the guys, so you do need talent. You do need a, you know, as it's a good point that you're bringing up. There's got to be a balance of the two. Um, so as we're talking through, and I know Dave Roberts was brought up. I know we're talking about you know just managers, Phillies, and outside. Um, also getting into John Sequella bringing up that the '70s featured a better NL East. Uh, Pittsburgh and Montreal were really good. And by the early 80s, the Cardinals were great. Well, let's talk about who's going to be really good this year. Let's give our predictions. Let's dive into because opening day, whether it's tomorrow or Friday, is here. It's time. A lot so of teams are going to play baseball great tomorrow. Time. Phillies just might not be Exactly. Even though the Phillies might not play tomorrow, it'll still be opening day for many other teams. So we want to lock in our picks. So today we're going to be diving into our predictions. Who's going to win their division? What's the playoff picture going to look like? Who's going to win Cy Young? Who's going to be named MVP? And most importantly, who meets in the World Series? Coming up here. All right, so let's start off the list because uh, I think we should jump right in. Should we do Cy Young and MVP first? I feel like maybe get the individual words out sure. of the way. Um, it's your show. You, you guys do whatever you want. I don't, I don't, I don't, make, I don't make the calls around here. Yeah, sure, let's do it. Yeah. All right, I'm going to start off with Cy Young. Who wins Cy Young? Now, yesterday as we were doing our bets, uh, I already gave my answer for this technically for the AL. I'm going to stick with that. It's, it's going to be Corbin Burns. For the NL, I'm actually going to go Spencer Strider, and I think Zach Wheeler gets robbed. The frustration and motivation leads to some other Phillies postseason success. I'll just tease mm. that out for what's to come there. I am close to you. I okay considered strider i also have corbin burns winning the al cy young uh i think kind of getting out of milwaukee onto a spotlight team that's going to make some Ooh. noise in baseball this year i think he's going to get him over the over the top plus no garrett cole uh, mm -hmm. e even if he pitches half a yeah. season it's probably not enough to be a cy young winner so I, I like corbin burns there in the nl i'm actually going with zach wheeler i think the phillies are going to be better than some people expect i think it's going to be between strider and wheeler uh, the two best pitchers in the NL. And I, I think this is going to be Wheeler's year. I think he's going to be better this like year it. than he was last year. Tyler? Uh, I am also going to go chalk in the National League. I think this is probably the year that Spencer Strider takes it. 280 strikeouts last year. It's pretty filthy. And again, like, yeah. so, you know, you, you keep saying, you, you, like, people say, oh, what if he gets hurt? Well, obviously, you're, yeah, you're, you're projecting, sure. you're projecting <laughs> non-injury. If he pitches a full season, I expect him to be up in that 280 strikeout range again. That curveball that he's featured in spring training looked really, really sharp. And if it's effective in the regular season the way that it was in the, the in spring training, uh, I think that he is poised for a really, really good year this year. And as much as I love George Kirby in the AL, that was more of a play, a futures play, than yeah. who I think is going to win the Cy Young. And I'm going to deviate from you guys on this one. I'm going to go with a guy you picked yesterday, Jamie. I'm going to go Pablo Lopez oh. to win the American League Cy Young this year. 234 strikeouts over the course of 194 innings last year. Doesn't give up a ton of hits. Doesn't walk a ton of guys either. Featured a 1-1 uh, whip last year. I love Corbin Burns a ton. And there's a lot of guys that I would pick in 
you know, short sample sizes in terms of picking one game or over the course of a season or over the course of three years. Like, you can go from short to long term just for this particular year. I'm going to rock with Pablo Lopez in his second full season with the Minnesota Twins. I drafted him in two of my three fantasy leagues, so that would be very good for me. Thank you, Tyler. I like your prediction. (laughs) And you guys, share in the chat. As I teased out, we're going to do Cy Young MVP World Series predictions. Who's going to be the playoff picture? I know uh, John Sequella in the chat is saying Cy Young for him. Tariq Skubal for the AL and Zach Wheeler for the NL. And I know you guys are talking World Series. We're not there yet. I'll circle back on your World Series thoughts uh, that Barbara and different people are sharing in the chat. All right, MVP for me. Um, now, one selfishly is because he's, he is on my fantasy baseball team, and I'd like him to do well this year. But also I do – okay, I'm just going to jump Bryce right into Harper. it. Oh, he is on my team too also, actually. Yeah. But no. I don't think he's going to win the AL MVP, though. I'm going – Oh, you said AL. No, I said MVP in general. So I'm going uh, Mookie Betts, and I'm going Juan Soto. And I do feel like... Contract year MVP for Juan Soto? I do. I do think we're going to get a different Juan Soto, like we talked about with Corbin Burns. Um, I think the Yankees, you know, with or without Garrett Cole, are going to have, you know, they're still going to lean on him a lot. And I think a full Juan Soto with the Yankees... MVP caliber season, and then I think Mookie Betts uh, back on that MVP spot. Yeah, he's good at baseball. Yeah. Very good. Wherever he um, plays. That's a pretty safe bet. Second base, shortstop, doesn't matter. I Mookie am, Betts. I am not going with top three chalk in either league. Um, it was Soto, obviously, but like the Garrett Cole, like the team success has to be there for okay, the MVP, fair. in my opinion. Uh, and I don't know if the Yankees are going to – I don't know. They just feel – it feels foul from far away. Mm. So while Soto is a, a great player, obviously, I think the team success helps a lot. And I think this team's uh, going to be pretty damn good this year. In the AL, I'm going with Julio Rodriguez. Mm. I think he's fifth or sixth in terms of MVP odds. He's at that age now where he's had like two or three years of kind of quiet stardom already. And I think I this like is kind of like, Spicy. I think this is the bust out. He's in his prime years. What is he, age 27? Um, I'm going to go with 23. Hul- yeah, he's very young. He's what? 23. He's still only 23? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I thought he was like 26, 27. That's freakish. He's been yeah. doing this since age 20? <laughs> this is his thir- third full year. Yeah, what his a third freaking full year. nature. All right, so I'm going Julio Rodriguez. <laughs> Damn, I thought he was a little bit older than that. Uh, and then in the NL, uh, I took him yesterday in our in our futures segment. I'm, I'm high on Fernando Tatis Jr. to take home the NL MVP this year. Um you know, when you pair a gold glove with that offense, I think you're going to be in the mix uh, pretty regularly. Yeah. So, Tyler, who are yours? Yeah, I'm going to just piggyback off what you said there, Jamie. I'm taking Julio Rodriguez to win the AL oh, MVP yes. as well. He went from seven in year one to four in year two. A back-to-back, I can't he's only 23. Back-to-back <laughs> silver slugger, rookie of the year in 2022. The home runs got 60 over the course of two seasons. The only thing that scares me just a little bit for Julio Rodriguez is he does get a little bit streaky at times. And like mm-hmm. last June, for example, he hit 220 over the course of June. And then in August, he hit 429 over the course of That's the month. Good. Uh, if you guys remember last year, I think he had 17 hits in four game stretch. The one, yeah. uh, the one weekend. Uh, so I'm going to take Julio Rodriguez as well in the American league. I think he's and like fifth in terms of odds. That sounds yeah, about he's up right. There. And, yeah. and somebody in the chat pointed out, Dave P says LA could have three MVP I candidates know. They could. going with a different one than who you chose in Mookie Betts. I'm going to go with Freddie Freeman. He's the doubles God to me. I think that he is like the guy that just, all he does is get on base. He has four walks already. Remember, regular season play has started, guys. <laughs> yeah. yes. It feels weird yes. to say, but he has four walks already in the first two games. Just the one hit. He's only, I know, yeah, he's only hitting 167, but his OBP right now through two whole games is 554. Uh, I, again, I don't expect it to stay, but 47 doubles two years ago, 59 doubles last year, 200 hits last year, 200 uh, just shy of 200 the year prior. This guy, all he does is rake. I expect him to hit high 300s again, maybe even compete for a batting crown in the Mm. National League with a guy like Luis Arise. I'm going to go with Freddie Freeman as my NL MVP. Okay. We've got uh, I think the Dodgers Julio Rodriguez three are, getting a couple, some love from you two and some people in the chat. I think they're three of the top five in terms yeah. of odds. Oh, like yeah. It's, oh, it's yeah. legit um, that they all could win it. J-Rod, who also, shout out to him and his girlfriend, Jordan Heitzma, power couple in the making. Who? She plays professional soccer for Seattle. Who? Jordan Haitema dates Julio Rodriguez. Oh. Google them when you get a chance. She's also on the Canadian women's national team. Beautiful, beautiful couple. Oh, my again? gosh. Jordan with a Y. Everybody Jordan. just check her out. Give him some love. Uh, phenomenal soccer player. Jordan Haitema. Haitema. Beautiful. I know. They're oh. a young power couple in the making. One to keep an eye on for sure. Not only is he winning on the field and possibly uh, 
you know, in some MVP conversations, but they're also a, a great couple. Just to, in case you needed to know yeah, that nugget. Yeah, she is um, She's not so pretty. Um, hard to look at. Yeah, they're a very good looking couple. All right, so I know in the chat we have various uh, responses for MVP, actually. This is kind of all over the place. Yeah, who's, who, um, who, Dave who's, P saying who's got the bus Bichette out, cause. for MVP, Jim Cunningham, AL will be Pablo Lopez or Toronto's Barrios. Uh, Neil saying Mookie Betts and J-Rod. Jim is saying Freddie Freeman also. Um, there's a, some Mookie Betts. Spiral out Mookie and Corey Seager. I thought about Seager. That's a good one. There's another good one. Um, and then John Sequel is saying Jordan Alvarez and Mookie Betts. Thought about him too. And then Corbin Carroll's up there. Maybe not number one, but maybe like number two, according to Dave P. That's um, not a bad long shot. I mean, Corbin Carroll's going to stuff a stat sheet, you know? Exactly. That, if the Diamondbacks end up, like, making noise in the NL West a little bit, he could very well, much and, be And a guy discussion. like Corbin Carroll, you could go to the AL, and, and you know how much Ooh. I hype up one guy in the AL Central. Like, Bobby Witt Jr. could be an MVP candidate. Totally, yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, there's guys that— There are some dark horses in here. When you've got those five-tool candidate players, like Bobby Witt and Corbin Carroll, for example, if, if Carroll gets a little bit more pop in his game, like— there's an out and especially if the diamondbacks are good again this year there's an outside chance he's an mvp candidate as well i think that there's a lot of really good like plus 1000 to like 2500 range guys that you yeah. could grab that are, are good plays yeah i know chris slummer saying uh some homerish ones he admits it maybe gunner henderson and bryce harper um <laughs> yeah i thought about the orioles guys i don't think they're yeah. there at mvp level no. yet just because they're still so freaking young i must yeah. feel like they cancel each other out which is odd to say considering yeah. two yeah. of the three of us took dodgers mean, but i think that like they're a little, they almost cancel each other out to a point where the dodgers guys shine through each other yeah and then there are some dark horses i see spiral out saying matt olsen as a dark horse and john lemmerman surprisingly trey turner he said surprising little trey turner mvp love in the chat he's very uh, high john randy you guys are saying if and john sequel as well if trey can give us a full year of post ovation trey he would be in the conversation. Oh, yeah. And Se fit. John Sequella makes a good point. I Voters do love odds. a bounce back guy. Yeah, he could it, like, definitely Trey, do Trey's it. Trey's up there. Kind of uh, decrease those errors. And that'd be great, too. Well, that's the um, thing. For him to win MVP, he's going to yeah, have to be a lot better in the On those 20-plus errors. All right. So there's our uh, discussions around MVP and Cy Young. Something to keep an eye on. Matthew H., glad we both have Mookie Betts on our fantasy teams, by the way. Love that. Love that. All right, let's get into our playoff picture as we are running through this order. Let me go back to my list because I just was in the YouTube chat. So now we're going to run through our top one through six finishing uh, playoff picture. I'm, I'll start things off with the AL, which is a little less exciting, in my opinion, than the NL. Uh, so I've got number one overall coming into the postseason, Houston Astros. Then, and the New York Yankees at number two. I've got then the Tigers, Orioles, Rangers, and Mariners. I believe wholeheartedly, and this is like my disclaimer I'm putting out for all my predictions, you know, much like when we heard of Garrett Cole's injury, it changed things for the future of the Yankees this season. We wondered what would happen with the Dodgers. Here comes Shohei Otani caught up in some sports vetting allegations and the incident around that and investigation. We don't know what this year is going to bring. So I do not like to just lead with favorites for my top T, you know, top teams and MVP winners. I always think there's a dark horse, but I don't think, I do think that the best team is not always that number one team. So that's partly why I'm going with what I'm going with because I'll get into my World Series title uh, matchup specifically in a moment. So Astros, Yankees, Tigers, Orioles, Rangers, Mariners. I think the Tigers are a sneaky one to win their division. And I do think that the Astros and Yankees will have a great regular season and then some squanders in the postseason. For the NL, I'm going... Dodgers to to be that number one spot. Um, Phillies at number two. Cardinals, Braves, Diamondbacks, and the Giants to squeeze in a wild card spot as well. I do think the Dodgers, Astros, and Yankees and Phillies will have the best, will be the best teams across the NL and the AL. And uh, leading into the postseason, this is how it would match up. And and it actually and obviously, beautifully Obviously, by leads. the way, it's supposed to say 24. That's bad work. That's okay. Me. This will beautifully lead into what is my World Series prediction. But I'll leave it there at that. That's just, you've got the Braves and the Diamondbacks matching up in round one. I'm sorry. Can you flash that one more time? Uno mas, por favor. You've got uh, the Giants one more and non-Spanish speakers. <laughs> Giants. One more time. Thank you, Jamie, our uh, translator. You mm -hmm. know, you're doing a great job. Giants and Cardinals matching up. And on the other side, that first round, you've got the Mariners and Tigers. And you've got the Rangers and the <laughs> Orioles in round in that wild card 
early matchup. I love it. All right. I think my hot take here is uh, I don't have the Yankees making the playoffs. <gasps> yes. <gasps> <gasps> I just what? I assume it's up, but that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Okay. Hot take. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right. So I have. I may know. Yeah, I have the <laughs> Orioles winning the AL East and getting ah. the number one seed. Uh, in number two in the AL, I have the Astros because uh, they just apparently never die. Yeah. Uh, number three, winning the AL Central, I have the Minnesota Twins. Uh, and then in wild card order, I have the Texas Rangers four. The Tampa Rays, if you know anything about me, I'm a Raysaholic. I can't quit them winning the five seed and then i have the mariners sneaking in there getting the last wild card spot in the al for the nl i unfortunately have the braves winning the nl east again i just think they're another hundred win team and i think the phillies are going to be you know 93 94 wins something okay, like that okay, fair, fair um so the braves uh oh, excuse me win the nl east but they're the two seed behind the dodgers uh you know assuming otani isn't suspended here for for much uh, because MLB doesn't want that. I have the Dodgers winning the one seed. A uh, little bit of a surprise here. I have the Cubs uh, winning the NL Central uh, in the three seed. And then it's tough because the NL West is a, is a bloodbath. Yeah, in, it is. Unless you're the Colorado Rockies. Then you've already <laughs> turned over and forfeited your belly to the slaughter. Um, Ew. What a gruesome <laughs> But yeah, you know, you're just like, I give up. Dead. Just either pet me just or kill done. me. Just end this. Uh, done, wild card order. I have the four seed as the Phillies as the top wild card team. The Diamondbacks I have in the five seed. And then I think the Cincinnati Reds are going to make some noise this year. I know they have a couple injuries uh, with Matt McClain. I think Lodolo's a little banged up. And there's another one. And it's, obviously, Noel Van Marte is going to miss the first 80 with yeah. suspension. But I think the Reds are going to be competitive enough to hang in, I in there them in and there. make a run at it. It's tough. There's a couple good teams, you know, like the Blue Jays, the Giants. Mm -hmm. um, there's some team, the Yankees. There's some really good teams. It's going to be a, a good playoff picture this year. So that's how I have it. Love it, love it. So love it. I am not too far off from Jamie's picks in a lot of them. So I'll start in the American League. And uh, we're going to go with the AL West first. And I believe that it is going to be the Houston Astros leading the AL West once again. I'm, I think that this might be one of the uh, final salvos for the Astros team before things, you know, start to change just a little bit with some of the younger teams, you know, up and coming. Uh, the number one overall seed, I am going to take the Baltimore Orioles to be the number one overall seed in the uh, the American Look League at as us. well. Paul Rudd meme. And I will, take the, uh, I will take the Minnesota Twins to win the AL Central. I know I've talked up the Tigers a lot this year. I, I like them better than their 81 projection, but I don't like them enough to make the playoffs just yet. And then in the wild card, I will take the Texas Rangers and the New York Yankees. And then in the final wild card spot, I agree with you. I'm going to take the Seattle Mariners. I think the Mariners could make a really, really deep run as long as they – like I think them getting in is going to be more difficult than them sustaining – a playoff run that starting rotation of Castillo Gilbert and Kirby is going to be really really difficult to see in the in a, a three a first of all three game series let alone a five or a seven game series as well where you might get a couple of them twice but you may mm -hmm. get one of the best pitching matchups in the entirety of the playoffs in that wild card round where you would get Pablo Lopez versus Luis Castillo assuming both teams can set their uh, their rotations up accordingly. Then in the National League, I'm going to take the Dodgers to be the number one overall seed. No surprise there. They're a super team. I think they win probably 105 to 108 games. The Atlanta Braves are also a 100-win team this season once again. I think that they're clearly the best team in the National League East. And uh, it, it's no disrespect or, or shot at the Phillies, who I do think are the first wild card. I will say the winner of the NL Central is the Cincinnati Reds. I wanted Ooh, to take the winner of the division. I wanted to take the Cubs. And uh, at the very at last second, I backed out. And even with all of the injuries and, and suspension to, to Marte, I am going to take the Reds to win the Central. And then in the order I will go with, the Phillies is the one wild card. The Diamondbacks is the two. The San Diego Padres will sneak in as the third wild card team despite trading Juan Soto. I still think with uh, Tatis and Machado, Cronenworth, Hassan Kim, and a, a relatively unknown starting rotation for the most part. I think that this team is better than what they've been given credit for. I am going to take the Padres to be the final wild card team in the American yeah, League. Yeah, the NL West, man, that's a bloodbath. I would hate I Diamondbacks, Giants, Dodgers, and 
A lot um, of good teams there. The it's, Padres, like, that's it, it just, I mean, it honestly leads to the dirty. question I know people have had of, like, is it time to kind of change up who's in which division? And, listen, teams, there's the ebb and flow of talent and top teams. It just happens in sports in general where, like, the breakdown of the AL versus the NL or any conference or any division is going to change. And right now you look at the AL compared to the NL overall and – a lot more, a lot of really good teams in the NL. So in the chat, I know we're seeing a lot of different responses. Steve Gessner's guessing, Gessner is guessing that uh, even though you're not calling on anyone to get hurt, you do think this is the year the Phillies win the division, uh, that 96 wins is enough for them this year. I know, Ray, you're mentioning you have the Orioles and Blue Jays finishing higher than the Yankees in the AL East. Uh, Spiral out saying the Braves will come back down, but still will win the division. Um, John Tequella say Jake Gabe's going to carry the Sox, uh, the, um, excuse me, Colorado to 53 wins. Um, and then I do see some twins love. There's some guesses for Blue Jays, Phillies in the World Series, but also the twins in the World Series against the Phillies. That's an interesting one, John Tequella. So you guys keep sharing your thoughts in the chat of who you feel is going to be in now the World Series. We've given our predictions and our odds. Now, here's my overall, like, picture of how the season's going to go. Because it all is connected. Okay? So, as I mentioned, it starts with Cy Young. Spencer Strider wins NL Cy Young. Zach Wheeler, who had a, has a phenomenal 2024 season, gets snubbed. Everyone's in uproar and frustration. Zach, Mr. Calm, Cool, and Collect is like, it's fine. I'm going to win the ultimate, you know, the ultimate title, the ultimate award. And that's extra motivation for the Phillies. The Phillies are going to have a phenomenal year, top of the NL. Um, the, the Dodgers, the Astros, I agree with you, Jamie. I think the Astros, are, this, is their, this is it for them. I think this is their last year. But I think this is uh, this, the change for the NL where the Braves, and I know it was mentioned in the chat, who have a, a number of older guys, and they also have some minds on the tank. This is the year the Braves take that step back. The Phillies are going to have a full year healthy. Of I wish Bryce, I could believe that. Of Tri this is it. I'm just speaking into existence. Bryce, Trey, no Kyle in the outfield. You're going to have a great gold glove caliber year from Johan Rojas. You're going to have Whit Merrifield, Mr. Utility, that steps in and, and does all the great things. And I'm not being a homer here. I truly, truly believe that despite how I had them, everybody finishing, it's going to be a repeat of 1983. Now, uh, the I-95 series, the World Series, the Baltimore Orioles, Phillies, in the World Series. Now, the Orioles did win that World Series four games to one. They won their third title that year. But I do think we're taking it back. We're repeating. It's going to be a Phillies-Orioles. I think the Orioles have some hiccups because they've got younger guys. They don't finish at the top of the division. They get in as a number four seed, but then they go through a postseason run and just completely run through the AL. I think the Yankees have a fall from grace. The Rangers, the Astros, it's Orioles coming out of the AL. It's Phillies coming out of the NL to meet in the World Series in 2024. All right. Nobody's going to like mine. Oh, no. I'm going to keep it simple. Oh, no. Orioles over the Braves. I have the Orioles winning it all. I think the Braves. I just think wow. it's. Wow. Yeah. The Braves I, getting I have the World Series? I, I, I do. Wow. I just don't think you can fa come up short that many times in a row with that much talent. Uh, Dodgers mm -hmm. are going to be there. Phillies have a chance, obviously. Uh, but I, I got the Braves uh, losing to the Orioles, which will actually bring me a little bit of joy if they lose. Yeah. So, sorry. Okay. Sorry, yeah. that's my prediction. Said, I don't like it, but so there like it is. Bah humbug. Uh, you, you want me to take well, it? it's not fun to say the Braves are going to be in the World Series, no, but that's know, my prediction. But, okay. You know what? I'll take, I'll take the heat off your shoulders. I'll take it a step further. I oh, think no. the Braves are going to win the World nah. Series this year. Oh, no, guys. <laughs> um, I Full heel turn from Zuli. I, I, I agree. With, no, and, and that's been my pick uh, each of the last two yeah, years they're now. Awesome. They're a really good baseball team. I think the addition of Chris Sale, for whatever he gives He's you, like, is a good move. Looking really good. Um, I'm going to take the Braves to win the World Series and I get over over the hump that is the the Phillies that they just can't seem to thwart for whatever reason and, and lose to the power of friendship and six brain cells. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to take the Braves to win the World Series, come out of the National League, of course. And uh, for one final time, as I just made mentioned, for one final time before things, the, the, the balance of power truly begins to shift, I'm going to take the Houston Astros to get to the World Series. They've been in wow. eight, uh, seven consecutive ALCSs. Might as well make it eight. This time I think that they get over. Or, or not, shouldn't say over the hump, back to the World Series. But I will take the Braves in six over the Houston Astros. Well, 
you, we started this show off with Jamie raining on our parade, and you and Tyler are ending the show the same way. Listen, it's okay. We're being realistic. Even though this is a Philly show, we don't have to be all Homer Phillies. I do truly, genuinely believe that there's everything in favor of the Phillies being a team that can get to the World Series this year. And as much as we talk about the Braves falling short, so did the Phillies. And I feel like there's that extra motivation. And they did do, in my opinion, some good around the edges moves that I think allow them to be able to have versatility and be ready come postseason time. Um, the depth is there. The versatility is there to now be able to get over the hump. So I see, I hear you guys. I don't like it at all, obviously. And let's hope that you guys are completely wrong. I know in the chat, you guys are, uh, you know, not too happy about it either, but uh spiral is saying Astros versus either the Phillies or Braves in the world series. Um, the Braves are stacked. That's the reality. They're a very good team. And I don't think the Dodgers and Yankees are going. I think this all the excitement everybody has for them coming into the season is getting squandered between Garrett Cole's injury and now the Shohei Otani. I feel like it's kind of brought them back to reality. It brought every, you know, all the Yankees and Dodgers fans back down to earth. I don't see them exceeding what they're supposed to as super teams, but I do think that there's a, a chance for the Phillies to swoop in there, or it could be the Braves. Who knows? <laughs> So that'll do it for us here at PHMI Phillies Podcast. Let's hope it's not Jordan <laughs> Montgomery uh, closing out the Phillies. In, uh, oh, no. NLCS or something. Oh, no. Because then that would really no, suck. No, 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 no. By, by the way, guys, I, I, I don't know if you, no, no, you noticed, but based no. on the way that the, uh, the wild card was constructed, there's a possibility the Phillies Diamondbacks may be the wild card series. That's wild. Because if the Phillies are the top wild card yeah. and the Diamondbacks are are the second, to they, honest, they're going to play each other. To be honest, I think that's all the more reason the Phillies need to win. Like when I was putting this together, I was like, the Phillies need to win the NL East because there's so there are so many good teams that that wild card round matchup is essentially teams that have they're, they're the, good, they're the good caliber teams. of being in the World Series. There's a lot of good, teams. Really good, lot of good teams. teams. So if you can get over, you know, win the NL East, get that by. As much as we talk about the playoff system, and Brian Snicker especially talks about the playoff system, it's not it's not always conducive in, you know, in whatever way you look at it. Um, at the end of the day, if they can get that first round by and don't have to go to the wild card round, it only will help. And, so and I think the one thing I that, agree with you on the, that. The one thing that may be true, at least in the American League and maybe in the National League, is whoever is the sixth wild card team in the American League there's a chance they might be a better baseball team than whoever wins the AL Central. And the same yes. might be true yes. in the National League as well. Like, I think the, the wild card drops off in the National League compared to the American League. But, like, to me, if I'm picking who's a better team, the Twins or the, the Mariners, I think the Mariners are a better oh, team. Yeah. The Twins are a good baseball team. But there is a chance that the sixth seed could be better than the American League Central winner. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why I know that's the conversation of, like, okay, the breakdown of divisions and everything right now is heavily – heavily stronger on the NL side than the AL, but that's what happens every once in a while. It always shifts. There's always a change. So guys, that'll do it for us here. Those are our predictions. We've got, uh, Orioles, Phillies, world series, Orioles, Braves, world series, Braves, Astros, world series, uh, Braves, Orioles, Phillies. Wow. All right. This has been fun, I guess. Sure. Let's hope that we've been wrong about a few things, the weather and yeah. um, some of our predictions for the season, because baseball, has, Friday. baseball has already started. And now we're looking forward to the Phillies getting in on the action and getting their season underway. So for us here at PHY Phillies podcast, remember, we will be live at Bet Parks Casino down in South Philadelphia. We'll be bringing you uh, our pregame show, watch party, postgame show. The Gargano show launches tomorrow, 9 a.m., We'll also have some giveaways for you guys, some Miller Lite specials, lots of fun that we'll be able to kick off the 2024 season, whether it's tomorrow or Friday, live with you in person. So let's all do our rain dance. Let's all do our, you know, TLC. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Listen, I know the whole choreography, naturally. Um, but I won't do it for you guys here. Yeah. I'll say that for another day. And for Jamie, Tyler, and myself, have a great Wednesday. Hopefully, let's have a dry Wednesday and a nice dry Thursday so we can get some Philly baseball underway. We'll see you guys very soon for much more here on PHY Philly's podcast. Later. We all silly like the man.